What's up, everybody? We are back with another Epic Collection review. My name is John Delabros. I am a comic creator, and uh, I have books myself. They are on Amazon. My Amazon page link is in the description below, along with a sign-up for my newsletter. If you like my thoughts on comics, you might like my comics, and I would appreciate you guys checking those out and supporting the channel. All right, this is Conan the Barbarian, The Curse of the Golden Skull. This is Volume 3, and the Conan epics have actually been a lot thinner then the regular, I spilled some coffee on it. You guys are probably cringing right now. My bad. <laughs> a lot thinner than the other epics uh, size-wise. They're about 100 pages shorter uh, in general. I don't know why they formatted them like that, but that's what they did. So we have a uh, very thin epic collections. Not quite as epic as the other epics. This one comprises issues 27 through 42 and annual number one. It's volume three from 1973 to 1974. So this gets into a little bit better of an era of Conan than we had in the first couple volumes. I liked a couple of the stories from Barry Windsor Smith. The first few issues I thought worked really well for the series, but then it kind of fell into a rut uh, when Barry Windsor Smith was, you could tell he was kind of phoning it in. He didn't want to be on the series. He canceled uh, things and they got some fill-in artists for a while at the end of uh, volume two. And uh, John Buscema was the last of those at the end of Volume 2, uh, which is pretty interesting. They put a couple issues in that volume. Starts out with a little map, and we get into the blood of Belhisar. So John Buscema starts uh, his run in earnest here in Issue 27, and his art's a lot better than Barry Windsor Smith, at least to me. Uh, I think that he draws Conan a little beefier, a little more action-wise. I, th I think things feel less stiff. Starts with Conan rescuing a girl in the desert, and getting into trouble in a city, which is a common theme out of the Conan stories. Most of these stories has Conan, you know, dealing with issues like this, and it takes an issue, sometimes two, uh, for him to get out of the trouble. The moon of Zimbabwe. It has nothing to do with Zimbabwe. Um, he is in a, fighting a snake here. Lot, lots of fun stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty formulaic uh, Conan stuff. And I gotta say, I'm not absolutely in love with this. I, I had fun with it. Uh, I enjoy each one of these stories. My problem is honestly with Roy Thomas's writing. And I know uh, I'm a, a golden silver age aficionado in a lot of ways. But uh, Roy Thomas really overwrites beyond like any other writer I've ever seen. Even Stan Lee, like at his peak overwriting, didn't seem to just add in the dialogue that Roy Thomas does. And it gets, it gets kind of worse uh, to the middle of this deal. See Conan rescuing a young gal and she he has to fight this like ape thing. Very cool. The monsters look really cool. Each one of these has like some pretty decent things. I noticed that there's also a lot of adaptations in this volume. So uh, this one is uh, adapted from Two Against the Tire, one of the, a Robert E. Howard story, uh, which this is actually one of the better stories in here. If you enjoy that. But there's a couple that are adapted from the Conan novels also. John Buscema's art is honestly throughout the entire thing. The reason I'm kind of going through this is it's very consistent. So the good news is very consistent. Everything's pretty much the same. You're going to get the same storytelling across this. You can see Roy Thomas's dialogue just stepping over everything too much. Um, I'd like to let the art breathe. And when I see pages like this, it's like, it almost makes me like hyperventilate a little bit because it's like, oh God, I have to read that much dialogue. It causes problems for me and it slows me down, which I don't like about this stuff right here a lot. We're into the annual issue now. Cool stuff. It's still good. Here's the here's the deal. Like the base, like the base stories are still good, and uh, the base structure's good. The art's good. I love the look and aesthetic of everything. I love the fact that he's a reluctant hero. You know who ends up getting into these situations, and this one he ends up in this uh, palace where there's a bunch of maidens, and he jumps in a pool with one of them, and they're witches. So he has to cut off her deal and gets into uh, gets into uh, a poison amount of trouble where he ends up in an arena battle. Arena battles are very standard uh, for this brand of uh, fantasy or science fiction. You get you get that in the books, you get that in comics, um, and that's a lot of fun. I like watching the arena battles where he's up against all these creatures. And this city ends up having like seven different tribes of wizards, uh, and this is this is actually one of the better stories too. Um, and they're kind of at each other's throats for power. And, uh, you know, Conan's 
showing up actually sets them at each other. And there ends up being a, a huge uh, battle. And he ends up uh, fighting uh, this one lady who calls herself Death. And she's a, she's a witch, of course, who is um, fighting it for control of the city also. And Conan eventually escapes in, in the midst of all the chaos is what goes down. Fun stuff. Back in the desert again, Conan's at. This one, he's really struggling finding water, and they find a lost city. This is a this is a really good one, also. And they go in, and uh, the guy grabs this jewel out of uh, a skeleton's deal. Of course, it, you know, there's rumors that it's cursed and all that. Bad idea. Never grab that jewel. Never grab that jewel. You always find there's a huge problem with it. And yes, of course, there's a huge problem with it. And he's about to get destroyed. Conan makes it out of there. A lot of, uh, a lot of the, the tropes, again, that happen through this, the, the easy come, easy go element of the hero. Conan's going in. He's promised treasure beyond his wildest dreams. And of course, that, that jewel's there. And, and you know the, the men who tried to grab it are uh, now skeletons also. But uh, he ends up leaving with nothing, not even his horse. He loses everything in the middle of the desert as he takes a walk. Very sad. Sad, sad coming. All right. The ladies, of course, uh, pose some issues here. Conan's showing his fighting prowess. Beautiful art. But again, like, I mean, I just found it a little hard to get through the tons of dialogue across these pages all the way around. The Curse of the Golden Skull. Lots of sorcerers getting fought against. Priests of these strange gods getting fight, fought against. This was a weird one here. Uh, the, the warrior and the werewoman. Um, and he does kind of fight a werewoman, but it's like... It's, there's a point where he kind of like lets her go. She comes back after him as a betrayal. This was an odd one. I like the design, though. This was cool. Cool cool art design for the monsters in this. But, of course, he runs off afterwards. Dragon from the Inland Sea. I liked this one a lot. Uh, this was... Uh, there's there's this group, and they're, they're uh, you know, uh, afraid of this whole dragon thing. And Conan's like, whatever, I'm going to go out and fight it. Because that's what Conan does, of course. And he fights it, he stabs it, he kills it. And it's giant, it's overrunning everybody, they're scared. He rescues the girl who's going to get sacrificed to it. You know, Conan thinks. The Fiend from the Forgotten City. This one actually has uh, Rick Buckler on art, who's not John Buscema, but he, he does a pretty good job on the art duties as well. I don't know who Rick Buckler is. Oh, that's actually a really nice cityscape right there. That's really detailed. But enjoyable, even though he did a, he did a, it's a fill-in, you know? These guys needed a break periodically, and John Buscema's back at the end. The Garden of Life and Death. I think that's the only fill-in issue in here. There might be one other if I, if I, but uh, it's so consistent even with that. Oh, this was a neat one. Uh, they end up at an oasis, and this girl, like, is trying to save him and rescue him even though she, he's rescuing her she's actually one of the she's one of the prettiest drawn women of Bushema throughout this entire drawing and she ends up in this like pod uh, after the, the plants like attack their attackers and she's like run Conan run and everything burns down and she's uh she grows out of this pod after it appears she died uh, very creepy nice end I enjoyed that one a lot Knight of the gargoyle. This one has a gargoyle, which comes to life, and of course Conan's involved in a heist. That's go on with another pretty lady. Pretty ladies always get him into trouble. I guess that's the lesson you learn from this book. Don't trust the pretty ladies. Especially when they're thieves, right? In the City of Thieves, that's a place where that's common to Conan stories. And uh, eventually, of course, uh, they take care of the problem, because the gargoyle is controlled by this wizard, and it's a battle of wills. Neat stuff. So I enjoy it. Um, I, I think it's 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 fun. But man, that just some of the dialogue in there is really, really hard to get through through Roy Thomas. And it does impact my enjoyment of the story some. So I call this an 8 out of 10 overall just because, like, you know, I like the theme. I like the setting. I like all the world building. I like the art. 
Um, I like the structure of the stories. It's just, man, I would love to go through this with a fine tooth comb and redo the dialogue myself. <laughs> and that's about it. That's the Epic Collection Conan Volume 3. Hope you enjoyed. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.